am Liana Renee Heber, and I'm going to give you just a few minutes about some different subgenres in historical fantasy. A lot of people talk to me about, okay, well, what is steampunk? All right, steampunk is one of the different subgenres in historical fantasy. Now, with historical, we mean things that are set in a previous time. So, historical time period, okay. Then you have some kind of fantastical element. With something like steampunk, it's basically Victorian science fiction. When Jules Verne was writing 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, he was writing what we would now call steampunk. Let's see, back at that point, it was just science fiction, because he was set in the 19th century. So he was writing as a Victorian. Those of us who are writing now, in our current contemporary 21st century, but we're writing something in a 19th century setting, well, then that is going to be either steampunk historical fantasy, or something called gas lamp fantasy. Now, gas lamp fantasy was a term that was created to distinguish between steampunk. So steampunk is basically Victorian science fiction. It has the elements of technology that you would find in any kind of science fiction novel. It's just set in the 19th century. So you have that steam-powered era. The term steampunk was coined by author K.W. Jeter in the 1980s to distinguish what he was doing from his contemporaries who were doing cyberpunk. So the term cyberpunk was a way to blend different genre elements that were technological as well as biological. So we know in terms of cyberpunk, we can really think of The Matrix, the film The Matrix, things like Blade Runner, things like Westworld. That was cyberpunk. K.W. Jeter was like, yeah, okay, I understand this sort of biological, technological stuff, but I'm writing things in the 19th century. Well, that's steam-powered, so hence steampunk. It was a bit of a term that was a bit of a joke, but it really stuck. And then, as X amount of years later, we have steampunk as a whole genre. There are conventions. There are whole steampunk conventions. You can be held around the country at any point. There's great resources online for steampunk. But it's a term that's a very specific genre term. What about gas lamp fantasy? That's what I write. So as an author who's writing something that's set in the 19th century, sure, but I don't have technological elements. My stuff does not have science fiction tech-based solutions to problems. What I have is fantastical solutions to problems. I have paranormal-based background for all of my problem solving in my work. So gas lamp fantasy was coined specifically by the folks at Tor Books, T-O-R, pretty famous uh, publisher of a lot of different types of fantasy and science fiction. Tor was really looking at this delineation and they put out an, out an anthology called Queen Victoria's Book of Spells, an anthology of gas lamp fantasy. And they put that genre term right on the cover to help distinguish between fantasy, and science fiction in a historical setting. So steampunk is Victorian science fiction. Gas lamp fantasy, again, the term gas lamp, much like how steampunk is referred from steam power, you've got gas lamp a la the gas lighting of the 19th century. So that's where that genre term comes in. Gas lamp fantasy has fantastical elements added into that historic setting. So steampunk versus gas lamp fantasy, they're friends, they're cousins, they're certainly folks who like one thing are going to like the next. Are these genre terms important to always understand? Only for you, the reader, or you, the writer, to know what it is that you're looking for as a reader. Do you want something that has a little bit more technological elements? Okay, then you're going to want to go for a steampunk. Are you wanting... Are you, you kind of interested in something that has maybe some ghosts or some paranormal, things that has fantastical elements, things that have magic and prophecy, then you're going to want a gas lamp fantasy because those things are the purview of the fantasy genre. So these are just little subgenre terms, just a little language in the publishing industry to help readers and writers have a descriptive term that helps facilitate communication between the author and the reader. Now, are there different types of uh, time periods that you can play with? There's other kinds of punk. You've got steampunk that's relegated to the 19th century, but then you've also got things like Diesel punk, which is when you get into the diesel gasoline era. So you start to think early 20th century up until the Second World War kind of vibe in the time frame there. You have other kinds of punks. You've got Rococo punk. That's, that's set in the 18th century. So you've got that Rococo vibe. It's sort of like a fantastical uh, court of the sun king, Louis XIV. So um, in all of this, these little terms 
whether it's time period, whether it's a way to describe the types of ways that your characters are going to solve their problems, this is how our genre terms really, really help determine these things. So whether it's steampunk, whether it's gaslighting fantasy, whether it's diesel punk, whether it's dread punk, that term came about because it's sort of like the, a horror genre term, but reinventing it for a modern era. So the dread punk uh, term was coined kind of off of the Penny Dreadful series, thinking, okay, let's look at how the historical setting factors into with horror elements rather than science fiction or rather than fantasy. So you've got a bunch of different terminologies. All of them basically are little subgenres within historical fantasy. So there's a few new words for you. Um, you can find me online at lianareneheber.com. I'm also on all the social medias. If you've got questions about these things, feel free to drop a line. Thank you. Have a great day.